So why do you need to be part of this? We want to invite you, who will in future develop courses within your scientific projects, who will look for courses as course seekers to widen your focus in, um, in your profession, to join this OnCourse platform, because OnCourse hopefully will become the reference biomedical um, course and training portal in Europe. How to use it? It's very easy. Just go to on-course.eu and you will find a lot of information about OnCourse already on the website. You can search individually via short courses, masters or PhDs, or very easy, just type in in the free text part your search um, term. What is very important, this meeting here is our first time that we communicate the OnCourse platform to a broader community, to a broader audience. And you, as a people interested for IMI, are the target audience. Help us to improve this platform and help us to make sure that it's addressed to your needs. So we will really dearly ask you to leave a feedback whenever you feel something is not working well, something you are missing. Um, you can also get directly into contact with your lecturers by going through the course provider list. But first of all, it would be really very helpful. Register. It's free. You won't get any newsletters or any, any, anything that you don't want. But register and make sure that you join the forum. This forum is a really broad discussion platform. And we can just be as good as you uh, made us to be. So just follow the, um, the course. Join on course, and thank you very much. I want to invite you all to join also our booth outside where you can get information about the IMI education and training projects, and you can also try to get into on course to find your course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this very convincing presentation. Uh, any question or comment? I will have a comment on the fact that really you have to realize that these courses elicit a huge interest, not only in Europe, but also across the Atlantic. And for example, just to give you an example, the FDA already told us that it will uh, suggest to some of their scientists to be involved in some of these courses because they, they realize that in leave for regulators, this type of course might be extremely important. And I think that they are future plan to have courses dedicated to regulators. I think there is a comment or a question from Françoise Meunier. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. <laughs> I am sick also. Um, how do you make the selection on the quality? You stress the quality of the course. Uh, are, do you accept only courses who are accredited for continuous medical or professional education because they are UEMS for uh, uh, the, the Council of Accreditation for Medical Doctors? Do you accept only courses which are accredited? We accept any course, but they are being labeled in these own course platform via the IMI quality criteria. So you can see clearly if they fulfill these quality criteria. There are nine uh, quality assessment criteria where you can find the entire information on the website. So they can label it. Any courses are being mapped, but they are differently labeled in this own course platform. Seamus O'Brien from AstraZeneca. Thank you. Very interesting presentation. Um, I was just wondering whether in the future you will be looking to integrate training from uh, SMEs or CROs, um, which, which could be used to train clinical centers on clinical trial operations, for example, good clinical practice. Any kind of training. Okay, we'll I'll come and see you course. later then. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, Thank you. Perhaps we can discuss this further this afternoon when there will be a workshop on antimicrobial resistance because in topic 1A, there is indeed a part which will be dedicated to training of clinical centers. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> okay, no further question? Yeah. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit hidden behind okay, here. Thomas you, please. Uh, I actually had the same question on quality. I think that's very critical, so I'd be looking forward to see that. But I also wanted to check, what's the regional distribution of the courses? Is there, I mean, do you have a good European spread, or is it, as usual, a northern European you know, 
kind of concentration of courses? It's a northwestern concentration of courses, of, co um, of course, but there are also a broad spectrum of courses provided in Eastern European countries, and there are raising, the number of courses are raising, but not at, as much as there are in the northwestern European countries. I know that there is a huge effort in certain of these uh, education and training projects, such as Pharma Train, to really reach, uh, you know, widely across Europe. I don't know if Hans Linden is still with us because he could have a comment on this. Hans, are you there? Hans is there. Yeah. Can you comment on the this geographical distribution of our education and training activities? No, I, I think that Gasali really commented that. It's, uh, it's uh, in balance geographically, if you wish. On the other hand, it is what is there so far. Okay. Maybe there are a lot more that we could pick up in uh, different parts of Europe, and I'm sure that will happen also. Because this has not been, been to date inviting all course providers to submit information into this database. Of course, there could be an active work done as well. There is, uh, I think, Gasly indicated that as well, an interest outside Europe, and that is more a policy issue if that should happen or not. And for the moment, it, uh, they will not be there, but maybe later. Okay. Maybe we should say as well, this is new, it's brand new. So all input, all suggestions to improve and to make this as complete as possible would of course be very welcome. Mm -hmm. I think that for those who are interested by this question, it would also be interesting to look at what pharma training is doing because I think that they have a keen interest there. So thank you for